everyone, and welcome back to Tokyo Tuesdays, the segment in which I head to the Tokyo Disney theme parks to sample and review every last eatery. For our 62nd episode, we'll be taking a look at the Sailing Day Buffet. Located in Tokyo Disney Sea, to find the Sailing Day Buffet, start in the Mediterranean Harbor. Head on in, and once under the open sky again, veer to your left. Head on up the ramp, passing by the gondolier snacks on your left. At the top of the ramp, continue on straight into the American waterfront, passing McDuck's department store on your left, and then restaurant Sakura on your right. Walk underneath the Disney Sea electric railway tracks and then continue moving forward to pass by the waterfront park on your left. You could conceivably cut through the waterfront park, but oftentimes there are character meet and greets or other events happening there, which will mean that the passageways will be roped off. Anyways, continue heading in the direction of the SS Columbia, but veer to your left as soon as you're able to keep the waterfront park on your immediate left. Do this and you'll momentarily find yourself smack dab in front of the Sailing Day Buffet. Sailing Day Buffet is a pseudo-priority seating buffet-style eatery. Built with a large barrel roof, this location harkens back to the architecture of many train stations. Despite being boat-themed, this harkening back to travel is certainly well-served, regardless. Like many eateries in the park, Sailing Day Buffet additionally occupies the two buildings on either side of it. Inside, it looks less like a station for people and more like a luggage warehouse, with crates aplenty lining the walls. On one side, a luggage conveyor belt is stalled, in the process of carrying suitcases off to be sorted. And you can eat among some of the more utilitarian aspects of the shipping industry. On the opposite side, you'll find the more human aspects of sailing, looking more like a ticketing office with books and model ships. The buffet itself is located in the middle, with two of every counter being placed in mirror orientation to one another. Soups, salads, children's food, hot entrees, and the house specials. There's plenty here to choose from. All right, Happy New Year. Welcome back. Finally not in Jack Skeleton face anymore. Yay. So today I am at the Sailing Day Buffet, which as the name might imply, is a buffet. So to start with, I have gotten a bunch of desserts because I am nothing if not predictable. Uh, I also got what I'm assuming are cheese stars, which just seems delightful. Uh, potatoes au gratin, because once again, I am nothing if not predictable. And potato salad, which smells interesting. So we'll see how that goes. I also got one of the alcoholic beverages, which is the Casa Soda. Uh, it looks delicious. We'll see how that plays out. I am very hungry, and so I'm just going to dive in, actually. So let's, let's try. Now, when I say I'm very hungry, what I clearly mean is I'm very thirsty because I'm going after the drink first and it is very good. Yay. Let's see if these really are cheese stars. They are indeed cheese stars and I am delighted. Potatoes au gratin. There's something sweet in it, which I think is a fish. I'll have to go back and look at the name placard a little bit closer because, well, yes, this does taste like potatoes au gratin. It has a distinct fishy taste to it as well. It's not bad. It's not unedible or anything. I would have just preferred straight potatoes and cheese. So I figured out why the potatoes au gratin tasted fishy and we're cleaning out my sinuses. I went back and I looked at the actual label and yes, it is potatoes au gratin, but it's potatoes au gratin with wasabi tuna. So that accounts for both the fishy taste and the clearing out my sinuses part. As I said, it's not bad, just I was expecting straight potatoes au gratin, and it was not. Let's move on to whatever's next. Um, I'm gonna try. While I was waiting for the battery to charge up a little, I went back and I got, first of all, ice cream because I'm an adult. And second of all, the special of the day, which is sliced roast beef, it looks like. So let's, let's try that. Of course, I didn't get any, like, knives or anything to cut it with because that would make too much sense. 
I put a soy sauce sort of vinaigrette on it. And yeah, it's, it's very good. They only give you two slices at a time, but you can go back as many times as you want within like the, what, hour and 45 minutes that you're allowed to sit here. So this might be one of the better things that I've eaten as far as main courses go at a buffet at Disneyland, or the Disney Resort, I should say. I also went ahead and got the melon soda because it pairs so nicely with my cassis. Looks like Christmas again. Mashed potatoes. I just, it's called potato salad, so you know. It's pretty standard potato salad. Maybe a little bit sweeter than I would expect. I'm trying to figure out what this heart is on the top. Cute little heart. But what are you? I have no idea what this is. The texture is very spongy. The color is very fishy. The taste is slightly salty. I'm going to assume that it's some sort of tofu. Whatever it is, it's not thrilling me. All right, dessert time. I'm gonna start with this uh, red cake with the gold flakes on top of it. Seems very interesting. Strawberry or raspberry, very intensely flavored with a chocolate base. Wow. That's very, very strongly flavored. Nothing subtle here. Delicious. This cake had a powdered sugar steering wheel, uh, I guess, powdered onto it. And then it was cut and you could take just little slices of it. So I got part of the steering wheel. The icing is a bit fudge-tastic. The cake, it's, the cake itself is a little dry. Mark that very dry. Frosting is good, cake is mm. All right, let's try this pink one. It's pink, it's got a white cake base and those little nerd things on top. Taste of strawberries, not much else. The nerds on top give it a nice little crispy texture. Next cake was a simple chocolate cake with uh, whipped cream and little baby marshmallows on it. Whipped cream and baby marshmallows are good. Once again, the chocolate cake is really dry. Last cake. Mm. It's a cheesecake. I don't like cheesecake. Okay, but outside the fact that it's cheesecake, how is it? The cheesecake part is really, really creamy. The base is the best chocolate cake that I've had here so far. All right, and then of course there is the ice cream. It is exactly what you would expect from chocolate or vanilla ice cream. It's self-serve, soft serve, so you can get as much or as little as you want. The machines are very generous in doling it out, so you want to be careful with the handle. Um, but as for like picky eaters, there's nothing really unexpected here. It tastes like vanilla, it tastes like chocolate, the toppings taste like what you would expect. Very, very unexciting, but delicious. And in case I didn't mention it, the Casa Soda is really good. So that's it for this location. I'm going to finish eating, uh, you know, what remains of my food here. Maybe go back for seconds on that beef. And then I'll be off to the next place. Bye. for finally not being in Halloween costume anymore, am I right? <laughs> On to the review. Service is a two out of five. I had a bunch of issues at this location, unfortunately. Uh, first of all, I feel like it's worth noting, though I can find no signage or internet posts to reflect this, that while technically a priority seating location, Sailing Day Buffet does accept walk-in more or less. Uh, the priority seating starts at 11 o'clock. However, they open at 10 o'clock, meaning that first entire hour is nothing but walk-ins, apparently. They also have a separate line area for walk-ins, you know, different from their priority seating line. So this is a common enough occurrence that they've made space for it. I don't know. 
Uh, it's something worth taking note of, though, at least. Meanwhile, uh, for the rest of my experiences there, I arrived at 8.30 in the morning, as I am wont to do when I am trying to make sure that I get into one of these priority seating locations. That's on me. I certainly know that I'm in for a wait when I do this sort of thing. However, when I arrived, I asked about priority seating and was directed into, let's call it, Line A. I went into Line A, I was the only person there, and I proceeded to wait for an hour. At 9.30, another family came up and asked about priority seating and were directed to Line B. I went up and asked again, am I in the right place for priority seating? And oh, wait, no, you were supposed to be in Line B all along. So I've already waited for an hour, and now all of a sudden I'm second in line, which is minorly frustrating when you're trying to get reservations, but whatever. Uh, at this point, I'm in line B, and they have a man come out to take our sort of pre-reservations to see how many are in our party and what time slot we're looking at generally. And my Japanese is not that great, and his English was non-existent. And usually I can work through this with people with a combination of gestures and just, you know, trying to speak using what vocabulary I have. However, his approach to speaking with me was to say the same word over and over and over again with increasing volume, which did not help me at all. I eventually pulled out my electronic dictionary and even that was difficult because he still just kept saying the same word over and over. We eventually managed to work it out, but it was not as smooth as things usually go for me. Uh, so whatever, I managed to get my reservation, that's great, I head off, I do a bunch of my b-roll footage, I'm off and about in the park, my reservation is for noon, I show up at 11.30. They usually like you to show up somewhat early, this is a little more early than I would normally show up, but I am hungry, so there at 11.30, and I get turned away from the door. Um, that's fine. As I said, it's a little bit early. I'll, you know, do some outside filming and just kill some time. I show up again at 11.45, which is usually when they want you to be there. 15 minutes early is my standard arrival time for a uh, priority seating location, and I get turned away again. Which, as I said, is weird because that's when they usually like me to show up and also it's cold and I want to go inside and get out of the cold on this particular day. But again, whatever. Uh, they don't actually end up letting me inside until five minutes till noon. Whatever. Get inside, I get seated. From that point on, all of my interactions are pretty positive. You know, nothing above board, but certainly nothing as detractive as my experiences outside. Um, yeah, all together, there was just so many sort of, you know, straws to break the camel back that I do have to rate it a two out of five. Atmosphere is a three or a four out of five. Mm, it sort of depends upon you as a person, I think. I really like the exterior with its sort of train station style travel looking architecture. It's a little bit jarring for me personally because I do sort of expect it to be a people moving location and it is definitely more of a luggage moving location, but that's on me personally. It doesn't relate to any Disney movie in particular that I can think of, which is always a disappointment, but they're also 100% full out with their theming at this location. You walk in and everything is themed. Now I sat in the ticketing sort of side of things, which is a little bit of a disappointment to me personally, because that side of the location just feels like Montana to me, where I grew up. There are locations and restaurants in Montana which just look and feel like this location feels naturally without like putting forth any theming effort. That's just what they look and feel like. So it doesn't feel special to me. However, I think other people will have a different experience with it. Given that, and the fact that there is no angle that you can look at this location from that they haven't done full-on theming, I do have to give it a four out of five. Price is a two out of five. I don't know, as with all buffets, you can try and eat enough to make the 3,090 yen price tag worth it. However, 
I would just personally rather have a limited plate of food that was expertly prepared and really nicely plated than an unlimited buffet that I just have to try and shovel enough into my face to make it worthwhile. Two out of five. The food is a three out of five. Everything here was just pretty good. With the exception of the dry chocolate cake and that pink spongy heart thing that was on the potato salad. I think it was kamaboko, but I really don't know. Uh, the roast beef was exceptional, but other than that, everything was just pretty much good. Three out of five. Overall, this gives Sailing Day Buffet an average rating of 2.75 out of five, which seems a bit low for a location like this, but also kind of seems about what they deserve. With a 2.75 out of 5, this ties Sailing Day Buffet with eight other eateries on the master list. I'm going to slot it in just above Mysterious Island Ice Cream, earning it 40th place. Meanwhile, on the table service lineup, it's going to tie with the Crystal Palace, and I'm going to slot it in just above, earning it 7th place. I do tend to prefer the atmosphere of the Crystal Palace, but the food is better at Sailing Day Buffet. So, that's it for this week. Come back next week if you want to find out where I'll be then. Hint, this is not quite the Doors of Durin, but it is similar. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave those down below. We'd love to hear from you. Give this video a big ol' thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like what we do, we'd surely appreciate it. If social media is more your flavor, you can find us there. Links to that in the description box. And I will see you next week for another Tokyo Tuesday.